Hello, welcome back. I promised you that I'll tell you the difference, the sharp difference between management leadership and a leadership. I look at that as an evolution over the history. First and foremost, there are three and a half thousand years, four thousand years ago, there was some, someone who actually built the pyramids in Egypt. It was the first draft of management that we actually ever, ever saw. It actually went from one generation to the next generation just by uh, practice. But it was still management, even despite this looked like leadership. Uh, the leadership, in the, in, uh, as you have gotten before, is what I call a misconcept. Leadership is something very specific. And management is also something very specific, like uh, a leadership is something very specific. So the evolution from four and a half thousand years before Christ up until now, in 1911, there was a guy called Friedrich. For a tailor here made their book called Scientific Management. That was actually the first time ever there was someone who tried to make it as a concept. It's actually now ended up being three concepts. And I'll also tell you why. First and foremost, what we actually figured out here and put up the, the concept of management is exactly this up here. It is actually stabilizing a business model. Management is what I call what you learn on your MBA when you're taking an MBA. So Master of Business Administration is all about this. It is to manage the business. It's not to manage the people, it's actually to manage the business. Because over here when we talk about leadership, we talk about leading change means leading the people. So this is managing the business. And this is very specific, exactly that and nothing else. You can say that this concept over here is uh, figures before humans. And I want you to remember that. First and foremost, nowadays we have to set up what I call a strategy. We take goals, KPIs, planning, organizing, budgeting, and control. This is the concept. If you follow this up here from down to this, down to this, down to this, down to this, down in the bottom, you actually have a very stabilized and very, uh, what should I call it, thorough uh, business model. That is actually very uh, difficult to disturb. That means one thing. Despite that people who work into this organization here are all resistant about what is going on, you'll still get the results. And that is the strength of that business model. And I want you to remember that because every time you go into a situation where a company has to go to survival and survive uh, the business and the business model, then we go back to this one. Despite we might be over here or here, it still goes back to that. It literally draws back, and the gravitation goes from here down to this. So this is the button. I call this a command and control system. And the reason why I say that was because <clears throat> all these uh, words in here is actually coming up after 1911. Let's take the first one. Frederick Taylor, he organized 100% on planning, organizing, and control. If you went on any training, 50 years ago, the only thing you actually learned, being in the middle of the organization, was planning, organizing, control, and nothing else. Budgeting came in for the first time, very time, after the Second World War. Uh, that's a different story, I'm not going to, to, to details with that. But just uh, tell you that strategy actually first time came in for the first time after the Vietnam War. Strategic warfare was something we used in business as well. Uh, to look into the future, and uh, what we did before that was called long-range planning. That was a completely different uh, way of organizing work. So, <clears throat> setting up a strategy was a new thing. Goals, KPIs, KPIs was something that comes up in the 70s. Uh, planning, as I said, 1911. Organizing, the work here is also something that came from the American military after the Second World War. Budgeting uh, was something that also came there, uh, not because uh, uh, they couldn't figure out how to do it, but to keep uh, control over the resources. Uh, that was the primary goal for budgeting. Controlling was to make sure that we all get what we wanted. That actually means that to some extent this year set up what I call results expectations, one and a half year up front. And the interesting thing is that business people are the only real what I call fortune tellers. Because they make a plan, and one and a half year later they fulfill the plan and say, that's it, done. That is how robust 
this uh, system has. It's always a top-down approach. Remark that. A top-down approach, when we, as soon as we talk about leadership, it's a bottom-up approach. The reason why, that also makes the split between leaders in the past, because leaders in the past were always on top of the hierarchy. He might be an emperor or a general or whoever it was, doesn't matter. But he was in charge, he took all decisions, he was the believer. I knew I want to, uh, you to do this and this and this because I know, I know that if you do that, then we'll reach the results. This is top-down leadership, or top-down management. But the point is that despite they call themselves leaders, they are managers because they use this concept. The interesting thing about this is <coughs> that all the executives here in this system here are believers. If we then zero down uh, what is the result out of this system, I call it one-to-one, -one. that means that we can actually predict what kind of result we want to have and we get it. The interesting thing is that this here can't take any changes. That means, for example, if you come to your boss in April and tell him, I have a very good idea, so why don't we just change a little bit and do this and this and this, then we'll get a better results faster. I say, oh, very good idea, but you know, we are running a budget and I'm sticking to the plans. So I feel it's a very good idea, so I want you to come up with that in October, because in October we make a new plan for next year, then we can take it in, but not now. We don't change our running budget and plans, not at all. That turns also out to be written because if the market, uh, marketplace change, then something happens. This has to change as well, but it can't. And for that reason, they start losing money. They have to change the business model. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And they are not able to do that when the plans are running because they don't have the experience for doing it. And they don't want to do it because they are believers. They know that we just have to do it a little bit harder, a little bit smarter, a little bit more tough. Then we will get the results. This is pure management. It's a very robust business model. And when it just runs, it can run for decades. One day get after the other, no problem. If nothing happens on the market, nothing happens in the technology and so on, people's education, then this will be extremely efficient. I'll come back to that on a later occasion. Let me jump over to this over here. It's called leadership. I call it Master of Business Leadership Plus. That is model one and two. We talk about leading change. So this is a business model for growth. This is a business model for stabilizing the business. Completely two, two completely different purposes for business. So business model for growth, leading change. We start setting up a mission. Remark one thing, now we are in a situation where we want to involve people. That means one thing, we need to give them direction. You don't need to do that over here. You don't tell people what they have to do and nothing else. And when they do that, you still get your results one to one. But the reason why you give them a mission is you want to involve them in a very different way. They have to imagine themselves, how can I do this better than what I've done in the past? And this is the direction. And the leader here points in the direction and tells it to each and every one. Then he set up a vision, and that vision is what I call a working standard. The standard for how excellent we should be in our business is this. Our competitiveness is down here. That means if we can take our competitiveness and the attentiveness in the, in the marketplace up to this, then we will win. And that's exactly what this is about. It's pure communication, and that's the reason why it's called leadership communication. That is leadership. Then we have something called shared values. And shared values is something that, that how, how do we stick to a business? How do we stick to this concept? This concept here, shared values, has to go right up to the marketplace. We have to figure out first and foremost what do our customers want, what will make it the easiest way for us to do this, and then we just do that. All the values that we have in a company, we have to talk about shared values, is built up around that, and that, and nothing else. Then I see here, you know, people who misunderstand the, the concept, they come up and say, yeah, but we have a value that is called honesty. I say, come on, that's not a value. That is a task for the recruiting department to figure out that people that we hire here is always honest, always 
do whatever we want them to do, always listening, always apply, then we don't need to discuss that because this has nothing to do with the marketplace. This is something internal that had to be in place in the recruiting department, not something we discuss on the weekend seminar, what kind of shared values we have. Ideology, what does that mean? That means if we go in that direction with this work standard, with these shared values, then we believe, we believe, remark, and not me, but we believe that we will deliver results. To make sure that we get that, we create some rituals. And rituals is monthly report, week report, fortnight reports. We have a discussion here and there. We have a town hall meeting. All these things, I call them rituals. So it's something that we repeat on a quarterly basis, all the same time, all the same thing. We have all our meetings that we have with our people, that means uh, my little team, uh, the department, the whole company, a business unit for itself, and so on. All, of, all these things are scheduled in rituals. That's it. And then in the end, we don't control what we are doing. We count our successes. And the only thing we have to do is to make sure that we get these successes as much as we can and we give people the freedom to get it done. This is what I call <coughs> one of the values here in this system, a bottom-up approach. That means that people have to contribute both to their own success, to the rituals, they have to speak up, they have to learn that ideology, they relate to the shared values, we have this working standard, and with this mission up here, we will reach what we want. And that is how the bottom-up approach is actually uh, functioning here in this system. So we ask for each and every one to contribute as much as we can. But remark one thing up here, this up here is set by the top executives. But the top executives are explorers. They are trying to figure out, does this work? And if it doesn't work, then they change it, based on the information they get from their people. If they come up and say, I see this will not work, uh, because as we are, us in the front line, out of the marketplace, we know it goes like this and this. And if we do this, then <coughs> we have to change this up here. And then we change it slightly a little bit. Nothing, but definitely uh, pointed at the, what I call the customers. This is an innovative business system. When this is up here, uh, 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 command and control system, this is a very in uh, in in innovative, flexible system where each and every one can, can contribute and they change whatever has to be changed during the budget year. That means there's nothing here that's fixed. The only thing that's fixed is what we want to achieve. And when we do this, everything is free. That's this one up here. So the bottom up approach. This is still controlled, not controlled, but this is still run out or implemented by team leaders, department leaders, all the leaders of the hierarchy. Still a fairly high hierarchy, but not as rigid as this over here. And all, all, uh, all this is fluent. And the reason why we then get the results one to four is not magic. It is because we involve each and every one bottom up how to run this company. And that is this one up here. Could you actually run a company just on based on management? And you certainly can, because most companies in this world is built on this foundation. But to give your organization wings to fly, then you have to go over here. Could you put a, is this equal to this over here? That means a strategy and a mission. Is that the same thing? No, it's not. Uh, and what about the goals and the KPIs? Is that the same thing as on the working standard over here, the vision? Mm, both yes and no. But the point is, can you replace this complete system with this over here. Yes, you certainly can, but there are some people who have to take control and follow up in this system. This is probably the planning department in your company. It is definitely the finance department and the, uh, the people who is in finance and try to uh, measure the results and give us an early warning if it doesn't develop the way that we want it. So we still have this system. But this here is the way that we, from the executive, run the company. And we stick to this all the time. This here got actually implemented for the first time in the 1980s. Christ of the United States, his name was Lee I. Cocker. You can read the book. 
600 pages, and that's this over here. But for Mac, we still need to have a control, uh, control guy uh, trying to figure out, are uh, the business evolving the way that we want it? But it's exactly a big shift from here over to there, and the big shift here is first and foremost that these guys over here, which is a stabilizing model in management, they from time to time come up with the concept that they want to grow. I said that's a very good idea, but uh, how many of these executives are actually able to grow the business? Because they have a mentality that goes in here, they don't want to change anything. Over here, they have to change everything and be prepared to change everything. And that's a big difference between this concept and this concept over here. But that's also a big advantage. We get a better, better resource over here. But these guys over here, they feel that this up here, forget it, that will never work. And that's true. It will not work their way. But this will definitely work this way. But remark, the biggest difference between those two is this is top down, this here is bottom up. So despite that some leaders over here who say, yes, I am definitely me who would take all the decisions, this is not leadership, this is management. The guy who sat down and said, okay, so how can you please speak up? Do I have any comments to what I have presented for you here? I would like to have it now. So let's see if this is good enough for each and every one of you. Have you understood all this? This is called sense making and, and acting. Does this make sense to you? If yes, if yes, how do I want to act on that? So, sense making and then acting over here, this is command and control and nothing else. To take this even further, it took me quite a while to figure out what's actually the difference here, because I saw some companies already in the 90s that was very successful over here. One of them, I worked for a couple of them, one of them was definitely AP Monomers Group, F.S. Smith was definitely also one of them, Ludwig was one of them, and so on. Very, very successful, up to here. Then I also saw some companies were absolutely outstanding. It turned out that they might be outliers. My point, the task I gave myself was, as I figured out there was a big difference between this concept and that concept, I said, how will the concept for the digital generation look like? Because none in the digital generation stands up to this. No way. I would like to have my savings here. Same thing here. But this is still a rigid because over here we have a very strong organizational hierarchy. Over here we break it down as much as we can. We take some of the layers out. Because now we're working for growth and we want this growth to come it means that we want to involve each and every one and if we can't do that, it won't work. So then we take it over here and as I said, one to four, one to one, and then suddenly I saw someone who made one to ten. I said to myself, what is that? The big difference between this concept here over here and this one here is that over here is everyone completely involved in running the business. Everyone is their own leader, and they have a saying, each and every one of them. And that is a very big difference. And this is what I call business model for accelerated growth. There's only one way you can get that, and that is to involve each and every one in leadership. And if you can't do that, you're still up here. That means you'll end up with that result. That might be good enough for you. I don't judge you on that. But the interesting thing is, can we make an outlier out of you and your company? And the answer to that is yes. But still, as you have to <coughs> develop the leaders and all the talent over from here to get over to there, then you definitely also have to develop and evolve all the talent here and especially the executives to, work, uh, to, to move from here over to this one. Executives over here are fostering a high concept. They're creating a high, I want to call it high concept. And that means now we will do whatever is possible to win here in this business. In a high line, I call this <coughs> the winning of the corporate, uh, the corporate, uh, what's it called, uh, game uh, in the marketplace. So we make sure that we came out in the entire world as the winner. We literally hate competition, and for that reason, we create something that I call second to none. 
That means that there's a long distance down from number two of the competitors, so we don't even, don't even look at that. They have to look at us. We set a new standard in the industry for how to run a business, and we become absolutely out of the forefront here. And that's this concept here. First and foremost, the purpose here is to progress to all stakeholders. That means we are so successful running this here over here that we want to share all the benefits that we get out of this. First and foremost, the customers, the employees, the suppliers and the shareholders, but also the local communities. And everything that comes up and have a stake in our company, it should be beneficial for that. That we are here in this little region, this little country, or this little state, or wherever we are. So, <clears throat> so it should be progress to all stakeholders, not just the shareholders. We should make a huge shift here. That means the power goes to each and everyone who's involved in running a business. The only way you can win internal in this business and have a talent is that you are extremely professional skilled. I call it exemplary skilled. I call your leadership style for exemplary leaders. And that goes right in here. That means each and everyone here has to do this. This system over here is called human before figures kind of system. Over there, it was figures before humans. This here is humans before figures. So each and everyone has to speed up and get things done. Each and everyone all across the organization is involved, and each and everyone embrace huge challenges, whatever comes up. This is important to understand that people they don't resist any change. We make people aware of that I have what I call a mental immune system that resists them from doing things that they ne is needed to get done. The organization, the same thing. An organization don't have a resistance to change. But the, we have learned over here, these two <coughs> concepts here, that that's something that actually works. And for that reason, we actually literally also create a mental immune system defense that they actually defend any change. We have to make people aware of that, otherwise this will never work. That, I call this concept, all embraces huge challenges and how to learn from that and achieve from that. First and foremost, up here we have what I call a compelling strategy and remarkable thing. Most of these plans over here, I've seen here about strategy here and strategy there, is only what I call <coughs> to prolong last year's project with another two pieces of timber. That doesn't work. A strategy is a real strategy. That means if you don't fulfill that strategy, you fail. That's the reason why I call it a strategy, grow fast or die slow. It is this kind of strategy I'm talking about. When we then set this up, and this is something that we have to discuss, discuss in the top executive level that we're actually <laughs> doing this, and this is what I call build up around the high concept. So it is so outstanding that if we fail on this, the whole company is bankruptcy. That's really why I call it grow fast or die slow. It will take a long time before you die because he's never believed that we will probably survive. But this problem will survive. That means not survive at all. We need to have what I call an exorbitant uh, business culture where each and every one uh, jump out of the bed 6 o'clock in the morning and can't wait to go to work. Uh, to work. That is this. The same thing in the evening, so when we, they, we want them to go home, you know, and they say, yeah, I, I, that's true. But I have nothing against, we have nothing against that the kids come and visit you in the afternoon because you're busy. We have a playing ground for them in this company over here. Maybe even we have them at school next to the company. Maybe we have a kindergarten next to the company. But that's, a, or maybe in, even internal in that company. And you say, come on, this is pure magic that can't be done. Come on, I know companies where they have that. I don't want to discuss this. This is not a, 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 a question of uh, who is right and who is wrong here. This is only a question about how to get things done. And if it's necessary for a company to start off kindergarten, get it done. Don't wait. It's a part of this concept. So, extra for a business culture, inspire everyone everywhere. I say the following. The most important people you should always impress with your behavior and your knowledge and your results. Otherwise, you get stuck in this system. 
When you are able to do that, then you literally hear and <clears throat> impress the most important people around you and inspire everyone else. It's not called motivation. It is called that you inspire and impress everyone around you. Most important people and everyone else. Then we talk about a self-sustainable ecosystem. I don't talk about a hierarchy. I talk about a network, a creative network that contains what I call a collective intelligence. This collective intelligence is what drives this forward. And this is called a sustainable. So it's sustainable ecosystem. It's literally like what I call a fish in the, in the sea. They don't need anyone to tell them how to how to uh, survive thousands, millions of years, they just do it. That's the same thing here. That's the reason why I call it an ecosystem. So it's self-sustainable. That means that each and everyone in the industry get a track for your company. You choose the absolutely best people and put them in the organization and you're still on your way forward. Then I talk about something called self-extending responsibility, not ability, but ability. That means whatever happens, you respond, and this is something that we train people in how to respond. And if your ability is not good enough for the response, then you have to develop yourself or ask someone else to do it. And that is what I call response ability. And remark self extending. If your colleague next to you don't do his job, you tell him about a problem, I'll do it for you. No problem. This is called self extending. But people say, <coughs> And what about my job description? Job description is over here. It's not here. You create your own job here. You move around in the company, figure out what you like to do, and then you sit down there one day, or stand up on a high chair, <coughs> stand up a high table, and say, this is my working place, I'm now here in this department, I feel I can contribute. I can contribute to this department. And this task that you have, I would like to join you. The other guys have then to accept that he actually joins you. And if he's good, exemplary, professional, exemplary human being, I can't imagine that you'll refuse to take him. That's this one. Then we have this one called spectacular jobs. Well done. Remark one thing. Spectacular. It's not just, you know, <coughs> the mediocre standard we're working here. We are working for the absolutely highest standard we can ever come across here in this concept. This is what we are doing. And that's the reason why we get these results here. One to ten or more. It's all created by people. And this is what we do. And I hope that you now got what I call a fast overview, the plans overview here, or what the difference between these concepts. It's not like it's that we are over here, we forget everything over here. That's not the point. But this here is what I call what makes a major impact. We still have to train each and every one in leadership so we know that they get, they get it right, each and every employee, even the blue collar workers. I would like to train them in this concept up here, and this here it runs by itself. We still have the planning department, we still have a finance department, we still have all these departments, R and D and whatever, like uh, this one like this, this up here, in a way too. The interesting thing is here. When we then, over here, try to innovate this business up here, it is pure innovation, but we still have to run the company. That means one thing. We literally over here split the company into the one who work on the core business, which is one like this. But I'll come back to that, how to do that. And over here, on innovation. That means we have to set people free who are innovative. And if we don't do that, we'll not reach these results. Another thing I like to say here in a self-sustaining ecosystem is that this here fosters, this system here fosters its own talent. It will be very clear who will take the lead here in this system, but each and every one had to learn that. Fast overview for you. That was all. Thank you very much for listening to me, and uh, I welcome you at the training. Thank you. Have a good day.